I thank you for inviting me. It's such an honor for me. And I'm Morinosuke Kawaguchi. And then today's topic is a happy innovation strategy. So before the whole lecture or the presentation, I, I'm going to introduce myself, spending for three minutes, okay? So I have, is that okay? I have the three phases of my professional career. One is a technology dude. I, I, am the, I, was, I have been the, consul, you know, the consultant of the management of technology for, for a long time. And also, second phase is a subculture dude. I am very good at that subculture. And also, in recent couple of years, I was, I've been focusing on the future projection, the, the project. So let me explain from the beginning. Technology management strategist I was. I was actually uh, 30 years ago uh, begin the working in Hitachi Corporation as an engineer. I was an engineer and spending for 15 years. And after that, I switched my career to this Arthur D. Little, which is a global management consulting firm, dealing with uh, you know big companies, uh, corporate uh, sections of this uh, planning section or the development R&D. That was my you know expertise. Then. Uh, the last year I got independent. So, and then these companies, and you see Omron, these kind of companies I've been serving for the consultant, advising, and the lecturing around. The second phase is a subculture expert. I was introduced uh, uh, the toilet dude, right? So let, please check out that YouTube. This was um, th this uh, TED, TED, TEDx uh, presentation for 10 minutes uh, made me famous. You know, this was a 40, 400,000 page view. It's still the record in Japan. And also, I wrote a book about this geeky gari uh, innovations. This book was got a uh, book award in Japan by the uh, Nikkei Business, and then translated in the uh, four languages, and benchmarked by those governments, by Taiwanese and by governments of Korea. The third phase is the futurist. In these two years, I've been focusing on this future projection, future uh, prediction or projection, right? So Megatrend is uh, my newest book. It's a huge book, like 4.8 kilograms, and then it's been selling to the companies. It's a B2B book. And it, this story was adapted to the uh, Japanese government national strategy headquarters. You know, I am one of the consultants in the national government, and also Ministry of the Science also, I wrote the principal, as a principal writer, the future projection. So that's me. You know, the one is the strategist of the technology, and the one is the subculture dude, and the one is the future guy. So using all my you know, brain and the whatever the knowledge, I thought of the Malaysia's future uh, for this couple, couple of months since I got invited. So let me introduce from this story. Today's story itinerary is like this. I will introduce about this uh, global landscape in short. In 10 minutes, uh, you will see what's happening in the, uh, in the world in, the, in this couple of decades, okay? And the second, on the contrary, the, what, what, what's happening in the world, what's happening in, the, in the Malaysia, what's the core competence of Japan, uh, the Malaysia? As an outsider of Malaysia, I analyzed the Malaysia and I got a conclusion, Malaysia is actually the key word is happiness, okay? And why Malaysia must hurry up? You know, you don't have a lot of time left over to, to develop the country. It, it looks like it's a lot of time, but you need to rush a lot. And then I, I explain the reason. The fourth, I will focus, uh, I will talk about the incubation of some part of the business process because you don't have a lot of time left over. Therefore, you have to concentrate on particular business process to, to use your resource, okay? And then fifth, I will uh, come up with some example to make sure you, your comprehension. Then wrap up with my, some proposal, okay? So let's begin with this overall future projection, what's happening in the 21st century. You know, there are so many future projection books available, especially after 2008, you know, the, after the Lehman shock, you know, all the advanced countries, developed countries lost the confidence, and they're wondering what's going to happen while all those emerging countries are going skyrocket, right? So there are so many books like 2020, 20, 2050, 20, 2050 to 2050. So there are so many, the scientists and the economists and the historians, 
they are all wondering what's going to happen. Our time is over, right? So, but they are they are all different experts. You know, some are scientists, some are talking about the technology, some are talking about the economy, some are talking about the geology. So, I, you know, you know, for this, for the writing this mega trend book, I went through most of them, like hundreds of the future projection book, and I got a conclusion one. There are so many differences because of the expert is a difference, but there are so many similarities. <clears throat> They all share one similar point: is the demographics. Demographics is like a population or whatever. So demographics, they all share the same knowledge. Then begin their own, you know, stories according to their own uh, expertise. So let me explain this common point of this demographic. <clears throat> This is a typical picture. You must have seen it somewhere. Population increase. You know, it's like this now. It's now it's increasing a lot. It's called the, the population explosion. You know, if you elongate the time range for the 10,000 years, it's like this. It's like it's it's called the exponential curve. It's obviously it's full full of the population. No wonder people start talking about the sustainability because we are too much. We we are too many of the people in the world, right? We are becoming like an island, and on the contrary, this wealth is also shifting from the so-called developed countries to the emerging countries. Here is the uh, from from 1980s to uh, 50 years of this uh, projection of the so GDP is pro produced from which area? This warmer color shows the emerging countries, and then this the cooler color shows the OECD, the so-called developed countries. What do I learn? I'm 53 years old, but when I, school, when I was a student, what I learned is this. This is a typical picture. Most of the population increase in the poor countries, but money is located in the developed country. But not after Lehman shock, it changes the landscape a lot. And this is not at the end of the ending point of this. It's not a 20th century. It's only 20 years or 30 years from now. More than half of the profit or the money it will be generated from the so-called poor countries. So it's totally different scenario we are going to see very soon. No wonder this summit member it has been you know the consist of the eight members G8 for like 30 years. But around the Lehman shock time, the so-called the BRICS five countries joined and they became the G13 and now G20. You know. It's no more leadership anymore. World is becoming so much flat, and for the longest, longest time scale, it's like that. GDP share of the Europe and the U.S. and the Asia is like that. It's obviously that this picture shows only this part of this whole picture. 1,000 years ago, if you were born in 1,000 years ago, it's so boring. Nothing changed. Yesterday, tomorrow, it's no difference. But look at this. It's such a dynamic time. We are so lucky. We are just seeing the, you know, real-time panorama, you know, movie every day. So, just you know, the appreciate to the God, you are seeing that such a dynamism, right? And then I was talking about the population increase, but the, the carefully you have to know the point is that most of the population increase in the city, no matter where you are. <coughs> This is the average of the uh, po proportion of the urban population. You know, only 50, 1950. Uh, 30% of the people were, you know, living in the city. But in soon 2030, already two thirds of the people are living in the urban area. You know, people are flooding into the city. You know, that's a big difference. You know, there is no more rural area anymore. N not even in Japan or Malaysia or Saudi Arabia anywhere. That's the point. So, and uh, this this is uh, the 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 relation between this urbanized. Uh, relation and also the proportion of the service industry, service industry and the urban area proportion is very much proportional. You know, no matter. And then this picture shows that from 1975 to 2025 years, uh, the profile. You know, these are emerging countries. These are so-called uh, developed countries. These are city countries like Hong Kong or not a country but Singapore. You know, they are. Always going into the right hand ahead and the up. It means people are flooding into the city, and what are they doing is the service industry. Okay, and here is the uh, big population ten countries. You know, three industries, labor's force proportion. This is the USA's uh, proportion from you know 200 years. Culture. 
to manufacturing to the service industry, first, second, third industry, industry right? Now in America, this 70% uh, of the laborers are serving in the service industry. So no, why? Because it's automatized. You know, there is no necessity of the you know labor concentration in the agriculture anymore because it's automatic, right? GPS, mani you know, manipulated unmanned tractor is you know running around the field, and also this uh, manufacturing again, this uh, automatic. You know, it's so-called turnkey model. All the robot is installed instead of the labor. So the world competitive company or enterprises means they have the less laborers because they are you know, more productive, because they are more automated, right? So that's a, such a sarcastic uh, answer. If you develop the more robotics technology, you, don't, you are killing your job opportunity. That's the inevitability of the technology in some, some sense. But one thing that you have to be carefully looking at is China, India, Indonesia, these countries are apparently, you can, as you see, once you graduated from the agriculture, you directly going into the service industry. There is no time of enjoying the manufacturing anymore. That's because it's saturated. Okay? Now, why? Why all of a sudden these emerging countries are ignited around the 2000 or 2008? That's all because of this they notice. You know, not war, civil war anymore. Then use the power into the you know, the growth. You know, this is the casualties number after the Second World War in the whole total of the world. You know, since we are, you know, exposed by the CNN or the Al Jazeera or this media, you know, such a lot of scary news we are seeing every day, so we fear the world is becoming so unstable. But don't believe that. The world is becoming stable. This is apparently at the time of this uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, civil war time, uh, the Cultural Revolution, or the Indonesian, or uh, the Cambodian, the Pol Pot's time, they were killing a lot, thousands, of millions of people a year. But no, nobody can do that anymore, right? Because we can see the Facebook or everything. Right? That the technology prevent all those massacres, right? So we are becoming more peaceful world, right? And then here is the peace index. By this, this is measured by the Economics UK. You know, the number is more, it means this country is more peaceful environment enjoy. So only three years from 2008 to, to 2011, you know, all those countries, you know, it's really growing this uh, peace index. It's those countries like Czechoslovakia, Czech or the Qatar or Malaysia or Thai. Ma Malaysia is here. You know, all those you know, successfully doing, you know, the business, you know, developing countries are becoming quickly peace, peace environment. I don't know which is egg and chicken, but obviously that's relating, right? You, are, you achieve the peace environment. Therefore, you got the, this growth too. So, so far, landscape of 21st century in one world, or five world, is uh, this is, it's like this. Everybody, relatively, from now, it's going to be peaceful everywhere. And also, the pop therefore, the population is increasing everywhere. And then all those increasing population is flooding into the city. And then those people in the city, how do they make money? Is a service industry. And then they are getting rich by the service industry. That's the whole landscape if you are asked by your grandson or the, you know, the daughter, you know, what, what's happening, mother or father, you know, in my time of my career, what's going to happen is that this is the answer in general, okay? So peaceful and rich. That's, again, the, you know, the egg or chicken. What's the key word is a peaceful and the wealthiness, right? So here is the chart. Peace index, as I mentioned, is the vertical axis. And the GDP packet per capita, that's the wealth, right? More you go to the right-hand side, it's the richness. And the more you go up there, you have the peace environment. So as you see, these are all nations, states. You know, as you see, this is proportional, roughly proportional. If you are in the li living in the, you know, the rich area, then that probably is very peaceful. But actually, if you look carefully, you know, these are the name of countries, it's not, it's spread around. Look at this, like uh, 
you know, even rich country, but very much not peace countries, an example is Israel. And or poor and dangerous countries, Afghanistan or Sudan, right? So those are the same category group, actually, here, war zone. On the war zone, rich war zone or poor war zone, it's proportional, right, like that. And then a little bit better states, stressful countries. Example is a rich, stressful countries, example is U.S. So from Myanmar to uh, U.S. And then the last one, top level. Top level is actually the Malaysia belonging from, from Indonesia or Laos to, to Austria or Canada. You know, of course, Canada is richer than the Malaysia, therefore their, their peace index is higher. Or, you know, this Indonesia is low, you know, little less, less rich or poorer than Malaysia, therefore a little bit less peaceful, but it's actually cost performance is the same. So you can be so proud of achieving this, you know, peace and atmosphere for the, for the sense of the cost performance, right? I was talking about the peace and the richness, right? So, but think about carefully. If you want to be rich, for what? If you want to have the, live in the peace atmosphere, for what? It's apparently not a goal. That's a means. Purpose is what? Purpose is obviously happy and satisfied life. For that, you know, sometimes you need a peaceful you know, atmosphere, or sometimes you need the money. But money is not a goal. You know, happy, if you are happy and satisfied, that's a goal. And then there is a convenient index. You know, the satisfaction rate. You know, there's an uh, English uh, uh, professor did it. And then they ask around the people interviewing, and the bottom, bottom up data, they are using the data. And then here is the GDP per capita, and the satisfaction index on this axis, right? So again, this is proportional, roughly proportional. If you are richer, you are satisfied. It makes sense, right? But spread around. And then these colors are, you know, depending on the region, Asia or the West Europe or, South, you know, whatever, or South America, right? So again, name them all countries. The richer, the happier. That's a general rule. That makes sense. But if you look carefully, each country, again, that's different. You have the seven, number 17. That's amazing. You are more satisfied than New Zealand or Norwegian. That's such a, you know, I'm proud of Malaysian people. You're not that much rich, but you're so satisfied. Happy people, right? And here is the map of this uh, happy, happy map of the world. You know, the cooler color, this, you know, green, the blue color is the happiest people's living countries, right? So I categorize three types. One is the rich countries, wealthy countries. Okay, you got money, lucky. Okay, you are satisfied. No, okay. So like North America, Northern Europe, or the or this uh, the oil countries, or this uh, the Oceanians. Well, they are happy people because they are basically rich. Good for them. And another, you can see a lot of dots of this, you know, this uh, blue dots. Those are the islanders, isolated islanders. Or Bhutan is isolated the continental island. So they don't have to worry about this invasion or anything. Conflict, there is no conflict. So they, can, they have their own ecosystem. So they are happy. Good for them, the Vanuatu people, Seychelles people, Maruta people, or Caribbean island people. Good for them. But here is a big, big, unexception country here. It's Malaysia. It's amazing. It's not that much rich. It's not isolated. You have so many multiracial, you know, it, should, it could have a lot of problems, but you don't. That's a miracle. It could be like a Yugoslavia at any time, but you didn't. You ran from this uh, May 13th, whatever event, right? That's what I ran. So you are achieving such a miracle situation now. And then look, go back to this, the, this map. If you look carefully, here is the Eastern Europe, here is the Southern Europe, which is relatively poorer than the Central Europe or the uh, Northern European. So they are so unsatisfied. So rich Europe, like Western Europe or Northern Europe, they are satisfied because they are rich. So it's so sharp, right? European happiness is very much depending on how much you have in the world, right? But if you are farther away from the European culture, like Middle East or Africa, it's relatively diluted. And if, if here is the average line. This is a computer calculated average line of Asia. And then South, South America or the Pacific Islands. They are 
okay, if they are poor, it doesn't matter. More like, of course, a little bit related, but it's okay. You know, so optimistic and happy. But Malaysia here, I will show you. So, later. So, so far I was talking about this happiness. Is a, as a Malaysian, you know what the real genuine peace is. Because you are you know, belonging to the first level of layer, right? Cost performance is good. And the genuine happiness, you know that, right? And also, the, that's not the happiness, it's not a, because of the money or because of the you know, God-given geometrical reason. So you achieved such a great you know, the, the circumstance. You should be recognized. You, that's, that's a Malaysia's core competence, a lot more than you are recognizing yourself. And then going, coming back to this uh, map, you know, look carefully around your neighborhood here. That's actually the sweet spot of the happiness destination. Here, it's a rich and happy, okay. And here, it's poor but happy. But around here, you know, you carefree like uh, Vanuatu, Costa Rica, Bhutan, or uh, Suriname. Those countries are actually your competitors. You have to benchmark those countries. What's happening there? Your competitor is not a Korea or a Vietnam or a neighborhood countries among those red ocean directions, you know, the competitors. But you are the leader of this uh, satisfaction and happiness. And your competitor is actually uh, happy rival one is a Bhutan, happy rival two is a, a Costa Rica, I come up with the example. Bhutan is obviously from this index, they got this national brand, you know, gross national happiness. The word it means, if you uh, Google the Bhutan, those words, gross national happiness, comes you know, from the first page to the tenth, page 10. So that's their brand. They're good. You know, they are very poor, but their satisfaction rate is so high. That's partly because of this isolation, too. But look at that rival, too, Costa Rica. Costa Rica is very unique country. It's called Switzerland in Central America. And then peace with nature is their motto. And then the most, num okay, the first country who declared the unarmed, you know, grand soldier, they w wiped out in 1948. And then they are so proud of the number of trees per capita. You know, they come up with good numbers, right? Trees cap capita number one countries. And aiming at the first carbon neutral, the prime minister declared to the UN, we are going to be the first country to achieve the carbon neutral. And also, their main income is coming into the ecotourism or the medical tourism, so that all the uh, American rich or European rich people are uh, as a uh, retired life settlement place. So because you know they are they are go focusing on this ecotourism or medical tourism, that's important. You know, Perak is a beautiful the beach. We, we, I see. I appreciate that. But as 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 you know, there are so many rival countries, so many tropical islands. No, even in this Malaysia, you know, other, you know, other part of the, you know, Rangkabi or whatever, they are the rival of this Perak, right? And also, the, there are so many South you know, Pacific Islands. They are beautiful too. So it's going to the Red Ocean. So what's more important is experience-based tourism. The example is the ecotourism. Another example is the medical tourism. So-called wellness for the body, human individual body and the so-called sustainability, sustainable tourism for the environment, those are necessary. Especially extreme is the volunteer tourism. We already have it, sector. Volunteer tourism means rich people come and they put up, you know, whatever, do the good thing for the nature, or the, uh, rescue the poor people, and then pay the money, and then go back, and then they feel satisfaction. So that's the time, modern time of this, uh, to differentiate your competitors, what's the harvest of your tour, it's that much advanced already. So from ecotourism, medical tourism, green tourism, volunteer tourism, those are promised industry. And Costa Rica is ahead of you guys. So you have to benchmark those countries. And the tourism is such a promised industry, as you know. You know it's, it's really radically growing industry. And then also the, a lot of this destination will be in Asia, Pacific area. So you are lucky. You are belonging to all the conditions you know, on, on conditions, but you, it means you have a lot more, you know, competition. So you have to differentiate for that, you know, you have to run. So, and then here is the performance, another cost performance of this tourism. Uh, the axis, this, uh, uh, this axis shows the, the tourist inbound from overseas inbound. 
you know, up here is more people are coming from the overseas. And then this horizontal axis shows the UNESCO's World Heritage, how many you, you have that, and also the intangible culture's UNESCO heritage. It means you have more to show to the visitors, right? You have a lot of assets to show. So all those super countries like France, China, Spain, Italy, all those top four countries are gathering so many inbound tourists from all over the sea. They have a lot of things to show around. Look at this, eat this food, right? But so basically that's a proportional. But look at this, India, Japan, it's such a loser. You know, we, are, we have a lot of to show, <laughs> but so, so few people come because we, you know, so as a Japanese, I'm so embarrassed. I have nothing to, to tell you. I have to run from you because Malaysia is, I'm sorry to say, you don't have a lot to show. But look at this. It's a lot to people are coming to Malaysia. So you are such a superstar of this. And again, around your countries, look at carefully Ukraine, Thailand, or the Netherlands. In that sense, your competitors are, I put this mark, you know, that's, I don't say more, right? They use that kind of industry, you know, that's a wild card to get a lot of guys from all over the world. But Malaysia again, you don't use that card, but still this performance. So miracle, you have a lot of charmness and based on, again, that's the safe and the happiness and then satisfaction, right? So, so far I was talking about the global landscape of this 21st century is that many people increasing and becoming rich and living in the city and they, and they are servicing. And then what core competence of your country is apparently happy, happiness, peace and happy. And then now, I, as I mentioned, I tried to change the topic, you have to hurry up, right? So here is a profile of the Japan's GDP per capita since 1960. It was so-called the miracle growth. Of the, we enjoyed the population bonus time for 30 years from 1960 to 1990. And then the bubble bursted, and then we got stuck. That's the inevitability of the life cycle of the S shape, right? So now the Malaysia is running ahead of the Southeast Asian countries, and then now you are about to explore according to the rule, right? And then look at the, you know, the, the, the the, the, the countries before, like a 1,400, you know, like a 500 years ago, this is the GDP per capita, you know, comparable value. So 17th century was a you know, glorious time of the Dutch people. They are the richest. And then after that, the, the industrial revolution happened. So what, what was the winner was the Pax Britannica. 18th to 19th century was a Britain's time. And then what the success of the Britain is obviously the America. From 19th century to the 20th century, that was the USA. Then after the World War II, Japan got it, right? And it's already declining because the, this aging issue, we are aging. You know, look at these people. What I, my first impression is young, <laughs> so I envy, envy you. If we have this kind of meeting, they are old people, right? So we are already aging and declining. And then Korea too. Korea is following Japan, but you know already you know the slowing, the, the speed is slowing down, and then China is coming down. So all through these 500 years of the history, what did you notice of this country's profile? There are two two rules. If you are late comer, you don't have a lot of time because it's time compressed. You know the peoples or the asset or the information it goes so quickly. You know transfer so quickly so the you know, the, this lifetime cycle is so short now, compressed every year. So, the, and also the peak time is getting lower. Japan is already here, Korean is already declining. The China, I don't know how much they can achieve to the top point, right? So, the, the general rule of this uh, late comma is uh, you need, don't need, have a lot of time actually. That's because you can catch up probably to the Korea, but your follower can catch up even faster. That's the rule. So that's so tough, right? Because at the, after 20, at the very beginning I showed, emerging countries all ignited at the same time, like the beginning of the 21st century. So their competition is so tough. So that's a one, one thing you have to be careful. And also, that's also why you don't have a lot of time to make a basement. 
you know, in the time, like an Egyptian pyramid time, they spend a lot, tons of years. They have, that's why thousands of years of this architecture still remain. But I don't know how much long this tower can sustain for a long time, right? Because it's so quickly done, it means, you know, you don't have the time to prepare the social basement, right? So that's the rule you have to know that, and you, have, you don't actually don't have a lot of time. So in order to incubate one industry, you have to fulfill the whole value chain of the business process, from the planning section to the researchers, for develop section and the engineer technicians in the factory and the craftsmanship. That's all necessity to achieve one thing. You know, in order to make even one thing, you need to plan, you need a whole set of this process, right? So from downstream like a factory guy to the upstream like a designer or laboratory people, you have to fulfill the you know, whole process. But as I mentioned, you don't have a lot of time. So you have to focus on particular part. So I, as an analyst, I compare those measurable numbers by countries. For example, this production, production uh, skill, you know, there is a skill Olympic. You may not know that. I will explain skill, what skill Olympic is like this. Under 22, you know, every two years, you know, they, it's like an Olympic game. And they compete, young people compete like a mechanical engineering or a carpenter or the automobile you know, tec technicians. They are competing their you know, hand technique. And also nowadays, all those, not only those guys work, but the beauty, hair salon, or cooking, those kind of also considered as a you know, hand skill. So they are competing this uh, uh, skill Olympic. That, that is more like a factory men's war, right? So f af after that, we need a designer. We compare the patent, international patent, and the academic paper and then Nobel Awards for the researcher, and the Moore Theory is a mathematics award, like a Fields Award, or the Abel Awards, and the Barina Awards, those world famous uh, mathematics award winners number I counted, and the, the plan is the Ig Nobel Awards I chose. I will explain uh, about the Ig Nobel Awards. Ig Nobel Awards is like this. You know, in Harvard University, they choose the, you know, the, in category each year, What's the funny idea? But it's not just a funny, but somehow deep meaning they are chosen. Just like this, you know, this is the bra, but in just situation, it can be, you know, it's a dangerous time, so it can be, you know, converted into the gas mask. Well, Japanese guy got this award in 2005. That's because he has been taking his all breakfast, you know, lunch and then supper, Every time they, he took the photo for 34 years, <laughs> so that's that's crazy. You know, for 34 years he has been doing. But nowadays, you know, this iPhone application is doing for the, to check the health condition, right? So he had the you know, for, you know insight. That's why he got this. Or this guy got the award because uh, he trained. Uh, he proved if he trains a bird, the bird can tell the difference between Picasso and Monet. So that's such an insight for the picture recognition computer people. You know, it's so difficult to differentiate this uh, absolute picture and the impressionist picture. Just, you know, this bar doesn't memorize. If you see the new Monet picture, this can be Monet. This bar can tell. So it's for what? But it's deep for somehow. So these kind of things get the award. So that's the Ig Nobel Award. Come back to this chart. So from production to the planning, through this technology, what's the country's number? What's the high performance countries? There is a pattern. Anglo-Saxon, they are so good at this software idea thing, but they don't respect this uh, hand skill anymore. They graduated from that, right? America and Britain is very similar profile. And, uh, France and uh, Japan is quite similar. It's a flat and a high level. And also this uh, Northern European, you know, they are very similar to America, but here, you know, this Ig Nobel Award kind of thing, they don't respect, so what? They are so serious people, you know, they, they, are, they consider, so what? Brazil, so what, right? So that's the country's feature. So what's Malaysia? That's what you have to look at, right? So let's compare the emerging countries. I was talking about only the developed countries, right? So here is Korea. You know, Korea has been doing such a good job for the Skill Olympic, much better than Japan for a long time because they focus on that power in the you know, technical skill. But 
you know, they have been dreaming to get a Nobel Award, but they still don't have it, or a Mathematics Award, they still don't have it, because it takes a long time to, to accumulate the whole circumstance. It's a you know, knowledge-based, you know, it's a lot of effort you need. So as Taiwan, it's a small Korea. So as Singapore, Singapore is only here and there, right? So that, it looks like India, too. It, it looks like it's in the center here, from academic paper to the mathematics kind of thing, it needs a lot of time to catch up. So you can see the time, you know, the Brazil, Thailand, Chile is here and there, right? And except China. China is, looks like a, a Northern European. That's only one exception. But except China, this uh, rule is uh, this, this U shape is the emerging country's rule. So now you have the three options. You gotta choose the craftsmanship, or you gotta choose the scientist direction, or you gotta choose the artist direction, or the creator direction. Let's take a look at the craftsmanship a little bit more carefully. Here is the number of the medals by, by time. It begins at 1960, and then it declined that Spain died first, and the UK is dying, and even the, the Germany is you know, declining. They, they are famous for their craftsmanship, but they are losing. So instead, what coming, came up is a Far East Asia. Japan first, and the Korea next, and the Taiwanese. Those are spending usually 15 to 20 years from beginning to the top, top level countries. You need a lot of time and effort. And those Southeast Asians are struggling here. Malaysia too. And at the end of the 1990s, Malaysia start doing, but they are struggling. It's not easy to do that. And then let's take a look at the scientist direction. Scientist is a Nobel Award. Nobel Award is even much more tougher. And it doesn't change much. You know, 20 centuries, the, the, the average ranking and the 21st century, 14 years average ranking doesn't change a lot. Only the exception is that Japan and Israel got a better, better performance in the new centuries. But basically saying, look at the Japan's effort. It's been taking more than 80 years. Now finally Japan got a lot of, you know, that now it's a third ranking in the, in the, in the, pre, in the recently, but we spent tons of 80, 80 years to accumulate this. So it's so tough. Even Korea cannot get even one, right? So now it's artist. Artist direction, I chose the Ig Nobel Awards, right? Ig Nobel Awards, as usual, US is uh, by far better than anybody. They are funny people, right? So forget the US, but other countries are competing like this. But it's new. The, this award itself is a late comma. So it's obviously, it's new. It's not 90, 90, you know, 100 years old. It's 1991. And then Japan is number, number five or six now, uh, number two now. But you know, if you get the only five winner, then you can be the first level of this you know, Ig Nobel Award world. It's much easier, right? Because it's a newcomer's, uh, for newcomer award, right? So that's an insight. So look at the Nobel Prize and the Ig Nobel Prize. As I mentioned, Japanese spent uh, you know, 80 years to get the 50 medals, and then Japan got the 10 years to get the 50 medals, same. But only 10 years, and only you know, 15 people got, and we already set third in the world. Imagine, you know, all of a sudden, Malaysian people are start getting Ig Nobel Awards in Harvard University. And the people start wondering, wow, what, what's happening in, the, in Malaysia? M must be, they got curious, right? Why they get uh, all of a sudden? Then they will know, as I mentioned, oh, actually, they are the paradise country. They're the richest, in a sense, the happiness people. You know, you are so bad at the promotion like Japan, so they don't know. You even don't know very well, right? So that's the one of the, you know, measurable number, and it's achievable number. You know, that's important to get the goal, right? As a leader, you have to give the, you know, people, your people, you know, that a little bit stretch goal, and it's visible. Visibility is important, right? So this is countable because it's a number of the medals, and it's reachable. If it's a Nobel Award or a Skill Olympic, oh, it's a, uh, disappointed, right? But here, it's possible. Even in the art, same art, here is the classical, you know, high culture and the subculture. High culture, typical high culture classical uh, music is, uh, you know, Chopin's piano contest or the Tchaikovsky's contest, you know, violin or cello kind of thing, right? And uh, those are the so-called high culture. And on the contrary, like an Ig Nobel Award exists, 
in the art world is uh, air guitar. You know the air guitar contest? Air guitar is uh, you don't have a guitar, but you pretend like a you know, guitar. And there is a contest in Finland, and it's new as usual. Here is the chart, like before. You know, Chopin contest is beginning from the 1929. It's, it's so old. And then Japan has been doing a good job. It's spending like uh, 50 years, and then took, uh, got the 27 hours. And then Korea now finally begin, you know, 40 years, you know, late or, uh, after the Japan. So once, uh, one, one day maybe Malaysia time is coming later, but cannot wait because you don't have a lot of time. Then this air guitar easy. Japan is now num number five, you know, but it's only f three, three, three hours. We got only only number five because it begins only 1996, right? So again. All of a sudden, air guitar contest, Malaysians are doing a good job in Oslo. Then people start wondering, wow, and you, it's achievable, right? So that's the point. Do not disrespect the subculture because you are the newcomer. In the sense of the art or in the sense of science, you know, sub is point. So summarize this point. Craftsmanship, scientist, artist direction, they are all, if it's a pure, it's difficult because there are so many senior countries are doing already. So in between boundary area, find your subculture-based you know, competition. Again, to get your pride and to recognize your identification, that's the way to do that. So I was talking about so far why Malaysia has to hurry up, you understand, right? Because <coughs> later you come, you have less time to develop the country. And also, uh, what should Malaysia focus on? Because you have, don't have a lot of time, you have to focus on particular business process. And I hint to you, that's a subculture, new category, right? Because it's newcomer. So next topic is to make sure what kind of you know, the achievement you should look for is the example to make sure. You know, your core competence, again, is the genuine happiness you know. You can be so proud of to the world. And then, the world circumstance or your circumstance, social circumstance is a quick incubation you need. So you don't have a lot of time. So the hint is some cultural idea like air guitar or ignobera. This is just an example. There are so many Guinness record kind of, you know, there are so many. You have to, you know, systematic study is necessary. But my answer, if I have to say one answer for now, is a discover rescue week functions by funny, cool way. That's the hint, okay? To give, you, give you the example, like in Ig Nobel Awards, there are so many black jokey thing or the happy, happy thing. So I just you know, chose some of the good example in that direction, Novi Malaysia is. Here is the one uh, invention of the metal, bronze metal alloy. Here is the natural, you know, material scientist discovered some special formula. You know, he's a metal engineer, right? So what did he do in Ig Nobel Award? Is this. Special purpose is this. Rescue bronze heroes in the world. You know, there are so many statues in the world. Some are Mahatma Gandhi, some are Winston Churchill, all those heroes are standing. But they are all suffered from this poop of this bird, right? It's so dirty. You know, they are heroes, but they are so pity on them, right? So this guy got the idea. Why? You know, is there anything possible to protect without using this needle here, right? So what he got the idea is <coughs> there is a mystery, mysterious statue in Japan, 130 years old. This is, looks like new, but it didn't have that, you know, the, this uh, hazardous of this poop. The, why? We people don't. This is by accident. So he uh, analyzed a lot about this, uh, why this material has uniqueness, and then he found a mechanism too. It's not actually the chemical reaction. It has some magnetic field appears with, with some portion of this metal, metallurgy. If you are the metal, metallurgy expert, what you are going to the Red Ocean is a strong material or a heat durable material, stainless, you know, nature, nature kind of. That's the, okay, do that. You know, scientists love that. But again, you got a peace, peace direction, a rescue week. Then, you know, don't take, take, take a, you know, these are the weak, you know, miserable heroes. That's already a good idea itself, right? And also, you need to know the metal science itself. So that's the answer, one of the answers. Another answer is uh, rescue fire casualties. So many 
pe people are di died, killed by the fire, you know, and then, like most in, in Japan, the 50, 40% of the casualties are killed in the darkness. It happens between 10 o'clock in the afternoon to the five, 6 o'clock in the morning because it's so dark, you can't see well. And also the 60% uh, reason is that you are too late to notice. When you are noticed, it's too late, it's, you know, surrounded. And also 50% of the people who died is uh, elderly, more than 65 years old, because you can't hear well, you can't see well. So here is the Ig Nobel idea, wasabi. You know, Dr. Imai got the, you know, wasabi, you know wasabi for the sushi use, in a, it's a stimulating smell, right? The water ginger. You know, automatic wasabi spray alarm system he invented. You know, it's you know, coordinating to the ordinary the, uh, sound flashing system, but the elderly people in the darkness cannot recognize, and it's too late. But this wasabi spray system, on top of this alarming condition, you know, conventional alarming system, 93% of people wake up in two minutes. So, so, so you know, that this is not a very much high technology, right? It's not an Intel processor. But it's such a good rescue, weak people, you know, you know the, the rescue from the death, right? So that's why they got the risk and award. The third, third example, rescue patient in the surgery. That's also the very weak people. And the doctor, Nimi, did the experiment, you know, this using the mouse, did the heart transplant to the mouse, and then put on the stretcher, and then make them listen to some melodies, you know, different melodies. And which mouse can survive longest? The answer is this. Opera Ratra Biata. He doesn't know the reason, but he made a careful experiment again and again. People believe, you know, Symphony Mozart is very well known for that somehow like a mysterious, right? But it's actually somehow opera, you know, this uh, Princess Camellia story has some mystery in the music melody. And he generates the same kind of pattern of the noise but it dies just like in the silence. So that's also, again, in the medical, serious medical doctor's world, it would be disrespected research, right? What the hell is this, right? But it's actually, he, 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 his viewpoint is so good, and it's not a high tech, you can do that, right? So that's, again, the eyesight itself is a uniqueness. So I, I was introducing these three to rescue our, rescue people by the funny way. So Ig Nobel sense is a both unique way to solve the problem, but the finding the way you are, your core competence is a peace and the satisfy, so the rescue weak. And there are so many types of the diversity of the weak people in the world nowadays, so that that's a good chance. So another approach I explained today is uh, this uh, so-called reverse innovation. You know, reverse innovation and you know, this, your comp core competence of this uh, satisfactory is what? You know, reverse innovation is a not enough countries take advantage of not enough money, material, export, utility, or blah, blah, blah. Therefore, you have to be wise to solve the issues, right? You know, in the rich country, you, you can do that with a financial background, but you can't. So typical example of this reverse innovation is like this. In, in Africa, you, you know, in, instead of carrying the bucket of the water, this whole container itself rolling, it's, and it can carry a lot of water. That's a typical, or even this uh, pet bottle becomes the, you know, the slipper. But those are too poor for Malaysia, right? Okay, that's a good thing to do that, but it's not for Malaysia. Then what's the cool reverse innovation? I give you the two examples. What I like is one of them is this uh, uh, MIT, Massachusetts Institute, and uh, uh, IDEO, the both American school and uh, uh, companies made, the, made a design of this uh, incubator of the baby. You know, baby is immature, you put that baby in the incubator, right? But, you know, the unique point of this is that this is all made out of the car component. That's a very big difference. You know, a lot of uh, global, you know, the, 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 uh, the aid program, like ODA program, you know, donate a lot of, you know, this uh, incubator, high-tech incubator to the poor countries, but end up like this. Once it's broken, you cannot maintain because it's too complicated. But this one is all made out of the car components like this. So in any poor village, there is a car yard of the scrap yard, and also there is a car mechanic in, in the most poor area too. 
Therefore, if all the components is made out of this car component, it can be the sustainable and give him the job too. That's why he got the idea. But unfortunately, this was designed in American cool people. But you have much more real situation, but the cool way, you know, it's not a, just a slipper made by the pet bottle, but this is a cool way. Like uh, this car component can be recurated to anything. Well, a bad curator can make it into the weapon, but you are the safest people and the happiest people. You never go to that direction. You know, go to that direction, there are many countries are competing. You go to the good direction, like uh, transformers, right? So nowadays, Bonjour is available. It's so-called open source world is coming. Then how to curate, how to make a function on uh, you know, key bottleneck. So that's why you have to do that as a take advantage of the, you know, not enough, not enough, then, okay, scratch it out, and then they do it again, right? So another example is uh, from India, same idea. You know, this is called the Ready to Stitch. Ready to Stitch was an old company like uh, 20 years ago, but uh, that was so innovational, innovational, because, you know, in India, it, the jeans, jeans fashion was not popular. And a Levi's kind of jeans company tried to, you know, the sell a lot of jeans, but it's too expensive. And then one guy of this company, Tough and Rough, Rough and Tough, got an idea. You know, he, you know, he delivered these components of the denim and the, you know, buttons of the zipper, and then, you know, in the plastic bag, they deliver it to the, you know, street tailors. There are thousands of street tailors, so they can make money out of this component module. That's why it's sustainable. It doesn't kill them, but they provide the material, and then they're both happy, right? That's, again, this is an open society's idea. That's why I come up with the idea, okay? So here is the competence of Malaysia. As I mentioned again and again, you're the happiest, you're genuine happy people. And then social trends, you got to choose service industry, as I mentioned before, and you don't have a lot of time. And you have to take advantage of being late comma you know, still imagine, right? Then one example here, I was explaining here, is the tourism, right? Service industry and peace and happy example is the wellness and the medical or the sustainable, right? And then second example, rate comma, take advantage of rate comma is a uh, rescue week direction of the Ig Nobel Awards or the air guitar kind of thing. You know, rate coming awards, you have to systematically analyze and they do that. A good performance, then people are attracted, what's, what's Malaysia, right? Then, as I explained, they, they will notice, wow, Malaysia is actually the good country, right? And then also, this uh, third one is, uh, as I mentioned, this uh, open idea, as uh, being taking advantage of not enough environment, right? Not enough resource, right? So, the, as, uh, as I mentioned, you need to pr you know, know yourself and be proud of yourself first, Otherwise, you know, you, you cannot attract the talented people from all over the sea. You know, it's just, a, you know, difficult. Your know, natural resource is just a decreasing, but the idea is sustainable. You can degenerate again and again, but taking advantage of your core competence and then late coming, you know, competition is, you know, good for you. So finally, I wrap, with, I wrap up with this, my proposal. You know, in order to make a, a, a mass produce the Medalist, for example, Olympic, you know, Olympic training center, you know, any countries, you know, do, do that and then collect the talented young people and train them like a machine. Or, you know, this uh, Skill Olympic, Hitachi or Toyota, or com those companies have a secret uh, training center in the, in the company and then do the welding, you know, exercise. So that's something is necessary, but those are, you know, you know, the senior people, uh, senior countries are doing already, as I mentioned. So what's new? For example, it's an Ig Nobel Award kind of thing. It's just one example. You know, you have to systematically analyze, and then task force, you have to make it, what kind of medals can be cool, and then all of a sudden, you know, this uh, Malaysia is doing, you know, good job, and then you get the confidence again. Uh, w then you, you have to be attractive. You will be attractive to the global talent, and you can gather. So routine, good routine begins, right? So le let's make the project like that, you know, uh, like, like this, you know, this, this kind of director is behind in a secret task force is analyzing global, wi which, which talent uh, we can correct, right? So which kind of awards 
we can prove ourselves as such a you know good people, right? So that's my you know proposal for this. You know, this is not only one answer, but as far as I know, uh, at the beginning I showed you guys I, I was strategist and the technology and the subculture and the futurist, and then. I was, you know, looking at the Malaysia for this couple of weeks since I got this proposal for this situation. Every time I, you know, show the data, I was surprised. Wow, what a, what a nice country. That's all I can see. So you can be so proud of you. I give you the, you know, the advice. You have to be know yourself. And then, but still late comer. So you have to choose one, focus your, you know, force into particular you know, the process of this whole business process, right? So that's my uh, proposal. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Moroni suke san I'm just going to stand here and make it fun because now you have to come to me. I don't have to go up. That's innovation. But um, great idea. While you come down, um, you can be no, here no, with okay. me yeah, because they're, they're showing the light to us. So and we're nearer to the decision makers. Ooh. Ooh. You know, <laughs> there's a reason why the Dutch in oh. your slide, right? in the 17th century, oh. they were the richest in the world. That's right. You know why? Because they came to Perak. Oh, they even okay. came to Panko Island, Yamat Bahamat Island. That's right. And they took all our tin mine away. I, uh, and they get the money. I, but uh, never mind. I, uh, we're going to be more sustainable. We don't want to inconvenience other people. The time of Asia is coming. Yes. Obvious, right? But I want to ask you, why is it Japan is not among the highest in the happiness index? You know what? We are so pessimistic people. You know, we have a lot yeah, of goodness. But you have goodness. lost so money. Yeah, we always worried about it. You know, All the cars come from you. <laughs> All our kitchen appliances, yeah. electrical, air conditioning. But you're yeah. not happy. Yeah, probably we used to be the optimistic people, but you know, once you get you know, more and more, you have to worry about what to lose more, right? Okay. So that's the inevitability. But now you have the chance to notice you have the potential, God gift potential, that don't lose that. That's the identification mm -hmm. your acts. You shouldn't move. And anything happen around the world, but you have to know yourself is the happiest, satisfied people. And multiracial, it can be conflict at any time, but you achieve the paradise in this world. Okay. And that's really amazing. <laughs> it's a miracle. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> you are, I guess you should make Malaysia your second home. Yamak Brahmat will tell you, Perak will want to host you. Thank you. Yes. See, he already said you're Thank most you. welcome. <laughs>